name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning, and good to see everyone this morning, and in particular to see some familiar faces from uh, the past this morning. We remember especially uh, this morning, Maria de, de Can. You were sent to heal the Kase Son, the Dos Santos. Let me try that again. Maria, the Kase Son, Valente Dos Santos. Not bad for an Irishman, I hope. <laughs> anyway, I'll get better as we move along. So, um, she was, died in Portugal recently, and so we remember her here at Our Lady of Fatima Church with her family members today. And we remember the mercy of God always in our lives. Whatever has happened in this last week, in all of our lives, we gather together and we know that this Jesus is always merciful, embraces us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came among us to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us now at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud, took some of the spirit that was on Moses, and put it on the seventy elders. When the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Aldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men said, My lord, Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The responsible psalm. The precepts of the Lord are right and give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord are right and give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right and give joy to the heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. And give joy to the heart. Your servant warned, in keeping them there is great reward. But who can detect unmindful errors? Clear me from hidden faults. The Lord are right. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. 
Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Precepts of the Lord are right and give joy to the heart. Your word, O Lord, is truth. Sanctify us in the truth. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After Jesus had finished teaching the disciples, John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon after to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believes in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter the life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and their fire is never quenched. A gospel of the Lord. So let's get one thing out of the way first, and that's the, that uh, rather horrendous part near the end. If your eye is a cause of sin, then rip it out. Your hand and your arm. <laughs> you have to realize that in ancient times, obviously, it was all a spoken language, and uh, they, they needed to find a way to emphasize things. They didn't have a uh, an iP- iPad or something where they could uh, put bold in or underline or any of those kinds of things to emphasize something. And so they had to do it in words. And you must admit, they come up, right? <laughs> and so they wanted to emphasize this kind of thing, and so they put it in that those terms. Rip it out and cut your hand off and all kinds of stuff like that. But it obviously isn't counseling anybody to s- self-mutilation or anything. So the the first reading and the gospel, almost humorous in in some ways. You get these um, Moses and the Spirit came down on others, and then there were two people on back in the camp somewhere. Well, they were kind of, you know, on the fringes, and God knows what they were doing back there, but ah, God's Spirit came down on them too. So they all run to Moses and say, hey, we've got to stop them because they aren't one of us up here. And so Moses rightly says, relax. He kind of rolls his eyes and says, anybody who's not against us is obviously for us. So we have to let God do God's work wherever. Hmm? And, of course, the same kind of scenario in the gospel where... Uh, these, they come to uh, John, speaks to Jesus, says, oh, we saw this other guy over there, and he was casting out demons, and uh, in your name, 
well, he's not one of us. So uh, we want you to stop him. You know, once again, Jesus kind of rolls his eyes and says, relax. Uh, God can work where God works in the most unexpected ways and in the most unexpected people at times. It's, it's a very um, pertinent passage, I would say, for me. I've moved in, over the years from this parish to this parish to this parish and so on. And so I get to a parish and I'm just starting in. Well, I hear that back in the previous parish, the new pastor isn't doing the same things that I was doing doing things differently. Imagine. Hmm? And so I have to read this passage and kind of uh, relax. Allowing God, God works to be God in different ways. In allowing different God people. to work in you whatever find it sometimes way I think in families too with parents. God would, would want they to. Are really are, there's another they're, focus they're trying, here that I would like to take and it has to do with a situation with uh, a, maybe the, a teenage um, a, a son or daughter and they God having much success God at all. working through people in the then, church or in the world you know, I son suppose or daughter in the church things, they run where into we, a, maybe a coach or they run into a teacher or something they just connect with them and they begin to really change and they begin to really uh, get a new focus in a way that the parents wanted but the parents couldn't seem to bring it about but here it is Somebody outside the family is doing it. Parents can get a little jealous of that. Hmm? That's really what we're into here. Hmm? It's really allowing God to be God. Allowing God to work in whatever way uh, God would, would want to. There's another focus here that I would like to take, and it has to do with um, the... Um, God, God working through people in the church, or in the world, I suppose, but in the church where we really don't recognize or allow. One of the great um, heartbreaking, I would say, experiences I have had in my ministry, priesthood, is to encounter someone who, when they were a child, Parents or others, authority figures, really put them down. Said, you're stupid. You'll never become anything of yourself. You really mess up in everything. And part of it is that they begin to live that out because if they're told they're stupid or they do things wrong all the time, then they kind of begin to fulfill the role and do things wrong and act like they're stupid or something like that. And the tragedy is, and this is the heartbreaking thing that I've seen, is that they become adults and those tapes continue to play within them. And they begin to believe that or they act as if still being told that they're stupid, still being told that they're of no good, um, still being told that they'll never make anything of themselves. And so that keeps pounding, those tapes keep playing. I would suggest that's what's happened in the church with the laity. For centuries, the laity have been told that they, well, yeah, in a sense, they're stupid. They really don't understand enough to really... Uh, take on responsibilities in the church and take leadership roles in the church. And so we end up after centuries with a laity that kind of have these tapes playing in them. And so they are not able to or they don't take that kind of leadership and that kind of responsibility that they're called to. And just like the child, the person may become an adult and you can tell them hundreds and hundreds of times they're not stupid, that they can take on responsibility, that they can do some really incredible things, goes in one ear and out the other, because of these other things that are deep within them. And so 
it'll take something more than just a few words. And so with, with the church, too, it'll take a lot more than 50 years of the church half-heartedly sometimes telling laity that uh, they do have a role, that they do have, can take responsibilities within the church in leadership and so on. That's the other side of clericalism that Pope Francis condemns. Clericalism is when we begin to think that clergy, priests, bishops, and so on, that they have some kind of a, a privileged place, that they are the ones who can really take responsibility and leadership. And, well, the laity are kind of left with the, what's left over not true. We're called upon to recognize that all of the baptized are part of the church. They're part of the leadership that we need. They're part of what God calls us to be the people of God. And they are the ones who are not hiding away somewhere in the church, but rather they're out there in the midst of the world, living single life and living marriage and really in a position to really influence the world. Would you you rise, please, as we... (laughs) Yeah, okay, Mark, just... Me, Mitch, I'm put- back in the reading. I'd be happy to read it before you... No, that's okay. We're not reading the second reading at this time during COVID. Okay, Mark. So, I guess... Car- Carol, yes, prayers of intercession. Do you have a copy there? The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that in Christ we may find the fulfillment of the deep of our hearts and nourishment for our life's journey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of conversion, that we may lay aside our old habits and attitudes that rob us of life and become new persons of love and service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are experiencing prophetic leadership on the fringes of church and society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have worked and prayed tirelessly for the release of Michael Kovrig and Michael Spaver, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For business and government leaders who have responsibility for food, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the COVID pandemic, that God will subdue the virus, heal the sick, and give strength to all those who care for them. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, and those who grieve their loss, that they experience the peace of resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Our prayers are remembered in particular with Maria Dante's son, Valente dos Santos. Dos Santos. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. Faithful and loving God, we turn to you with confidence. We ask you to hear all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated at the altar table. It's now prepared for the celebration of Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to us, which earth has given. Human hands have made it, will become for us the bread of life.
Pray that our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good good of all this church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this, our offering, may find acceptance with you, that through it, the wellspring of all blessings may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy. Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, Take this resurrection, all of you. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. This, Giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, the bringer of the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, all the clergy, and all the baptized. Take this, all of you, and drink. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on and us all, we pray. pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, the mystery we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. Claim, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is, therefore, through him celebrate the memorial and with him, of his death and resurrection. And in him we offer you, o Lord, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, thanks that you have glory to be in your presence yours and minister to you forever and ever. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, <coughs> we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Have the Savior's the command, and charity, informed by divine teaching. with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all the baptized. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is... 
through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Lord, 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 in thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be thine on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. I invite you to offer each other a sign of the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace of Christ be in. Peace of Christ. <laughs> Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My sisters and brothers in Christ, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the of God. Lord, I am not worthy
we may be so clear in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim to Him. Live and reign forever Wish you a good day, and uh, usually I'm scheduled to say Mass here on Wednesday at 6 o'clock. And I won't be here. I'm not sure what the arrangements are, but I'm, I'm getting that fine out of the eye. So I'll be an owl on the same page. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing upon you. Gracious and loving God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Let us send pray. a powerful spirit upon this community. Stir this up within them mystery, all the gifts Lord. that you have given them Restore in their baptism, in mind and body, so that they may go out and that we may be bring about the kingdom of God in this glory world. With Christ. And may Almighty God we bless you this day and in the days united, ahead. Whenever Father, we proclaim the Son, His death, Holy Spirit, Amen. Lives and reigns for go Lord, in the peace ever. of Christ. Thanks be to God. Day and uh, usually I'm scheduled to say. Mass here on Wednesday at six o'clock. I won't be here. Help me to see